my name is Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today we've got a Bang & Olufsen product from 1969 to 1972 I believe it was. It's a reel to reel player. This thing back in the day was super expensive so approximately it would have cost £150. Now look at what £150 back then is today £2,500 a ridiculous amount of money so obviously this was only for people who were really really into this stuff and high-end earners now if we take off this here this has got a kind of like smoked color to it I think it's probably original here it is so that's where you put your reels on now I got this one because it's an interesting fault on eBay basically apparently this was working and the seller shipped it to a, a buyer and then when it arrived the buyer said it's not working so uh, yeah the seller's had a look at it he says he doesn't know what's wrong with it I think that's what it said anyway I've got to double check the uh, the listing that doesn't go down there that's jammed but uh, yeah nice metal here some sort of aluminium up here again bang a lot of it looks like it's going to be well made we've got a nice wood case going around the edge here so uh, yeah let me show you the listing and then I'll plug it in and show you what it's doing so I put an offer in for £50 and it was £20 postage, so £70 altogether. And let me just read you the description. BO code 1600, and that's the type there. Four track. This item was recently sold on eBay and buyer has returned it claiming it wasn't as described or as per the photos. When it left me, the reels worked fine, but was otherwise untested. The returned item does not switch on. The motor runs, but reels do not move. There is no external signs of damage. I've checked the belt and two glass fuses that can be seen with the cover off. So I have no idea if this item has been tampered with or what the fault might be. I have described this item as accurately as I can. So it says here that uh, with, with the probability that's an easy fix for somebody knowledgeable. Now that is questionable, but I'm, uh, yeah, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful. I mean, if it was working, unless the original buyer did something to it, like taken apart or something, which do you know what? It could happen, but maybe it's just been damaged in transit. Let's give everybody the benefit of the doubt. So uh, let me plug it in and show you exactly what it's going to do. And I've got to be careful because this plug has a nice big, uh, nice big crack in the top of it, but that is the earth pin anyway. But still, that obviously has to be changed over. Right, let's plug it in. No. And as far as I can see, it's making the right noises and stuff, but yeah, the reels do not move. That says to me it's going to be a belt problem, but the seller said that he's already checked the belts. So uh, that's what's interesting for me. So watch this now. You can hear it whir in there. You can see that these needles go across here. And listen to this. If this is nice, this is the way it does the fast forward and rewind. If we go here and go to here, it speeds up. slows down and goes the other way and I mean it sounds lovely it just sounds smooth I can tell the inside of this is going to be nice already maybe that's because I know it's Bang & Olufsen but uh, even just that there the way it ramps up just sounds lovely and that must be play so oh and different speeds as well check this out that speed and now this speed much quicker. Don't know what everything else does. I believe this can be used, I think if you're using it as an amplifier, I think you can have it where the motor doesn't spin. I wonder how you do that. There we go. So let's get rid of them. Yeah, so when you just have that pressed, it cuts off the motor. So it's quite nice because the other reel-to-reel uh, -reel that I did, the motor was constantly working, but I don't think that could have been used as a separate amplifier. And I believe this can be stood up on its end as well. So you can stand it up like that. Oh, it's so heavy. There we have it. Nice, isn't it? Right, let's uh, bring it over to the blue mat, take it apart, and see if we can find out why these are not spinning. Okay, so obviously I'm unplugged. Now, when I was feeling this, it feels weird because look what they've done. All the others are nice and smooth. For example, you can see that this one here screws in, you know, nice, good quality. 
This one here is push fit. That does need work because this is not centered. I can't push that down. But look here, there's a horrible, great big whacking screw in here. And it feels Horace catching on my finger because there's a big burr on it. Uh, so I was looking at that and now look, uh oh. Basically this has uh, come out and it's not doing what it needs to do anymore. So uh, I don't really have as much faith now in the, the insides of this as I did a minute ago because that screw there looks like it's a proper bodge job, even by my standards. Right now, uh, if you haven't seen my videos before, I, this is a trying to fix. I don't know my way around real players, real to real. I did one before. That was a, uh, a Philips one. Let me just show it to you. This little beauty here, built-in speaker, nice little carry case there, carry handle. Uh, with this one here, it was just, the, the belts had perished. I say just, but those belts went absolutely everywhere, so it was a nightmare to clean. But the seller said that these belts were okay. Right, so I've got to try and take this apart. Uh, now, should we just do it from the back, or? And that comes out there. Here we go. Is that designed to do that? I just clip in like so. Oh, look at that. That's nice, look at that piece there. Yes, it is, this push fit. Look at that little connection there. And they go into these bits here. Now I've got to be careful because I have had power in this so there might be capacitors that are charged up. But already that is one big nice lump of metal, isn't it? Aluminium, I think. Beautiful. Okay. Ooh, I was expecting to see rubber belts. <laughs> I think I can already see the problem. This is real, I haven't taken the cover off this before. It's very dirty. Can you see what could possibly be wrong? Let me zoom in a little bit. So it looks like we've got some kind of string sort of tensioner thing going on here. But look, this is a motor here, isn't it? Now, can you see what's wrong? Ta da! Belt. That belt's come away from the pulley thing around here. How that happened? Would that happen in transit? Not sure. There we go. Can you see now it's back on it? Yeah? So now when that's spinning, it's gonna spin this, which is gonna spin this, which is gonna pull the tape through. To be fair, that belt looks, uh, belt looks okay. We have to fix this lever thing down here anyway. So we have got to still do something on it. Should we plug it in and see if that's spinning round? I'll keep my hands well clear of everything. Right, here goes. Yeah, there you go. Oh, hold on. Yeah, because we haven't done, yeah, when we go to play, they'll start spinning. But we can't do that now because of this here. So let's fix that. I was thinking before it should be spinning, but of course there's only when you go to play, but I went to play last time and they still weren't spinning then. Right, so I'm unplugged again. So now let's try to fix up this lever thing here. So I'm gonna take off that, unscrew this one. Oops, whoa, really got me in the face. Do you know what, even they're metal. That's not plastic, there's plastic on the inside, but that is metal. And they've got little kind of foam buffer type things, must be so it slides up and down nice on here. Right, so we've got a screw here and a screw here, let's undo them. I'm really surprised the seller missed that, you know. He said he checked glass fuses, but yet he didn't check the belt there. I can't even see any glass fuses.
Also, we've got a screw here protruding through. There must have been feet there at some stage. So that's going to scratch up whatever surface it goes onto. There's nothing there, though. Also, I've just noticed if we have a look down here, can you see there's a pulley for the little timer thing, the counter, and there's no, there's nothing on that. So I don't think that timer's gonna work, and even when I'm turning that, it's not turning here. Really weird. Well, okay, it looks like there probably is quite a few things to do on this. What a horrible screw to fit in there. So I presume originally that would have been a little grub screw in there. I wonder maybe, I'll tell you what could be done here. That could be cut off and then we could just grind a little slot in there. We could make our own grub screw out of this, couldn't we? Because I can't have that, that's just horrible. Very nice. Now, why isn't that screw there turning, turning these, I wonder? Well, I've never looked into how they work, but we're gonna have to learn that, aren't we? Right, what we got? Oh, we got a headphone jack here. Didn't realise. Now, this thing here. Oh, I'm going to have to get right deep down into this. This is where it's going to get complicated. Oh, here we go. Ah, that is working. I wonder what stops that from pulling out, though. Let's see now if the wheels are turning when we do that. Let's plug it in again. Right, let's go. No. Ah, look here. That's not turning there because it's gone so dry and hard. Right, let's see when we go when we go to play, what should happen. Well, I suppose the tape's bringing it round then, isn't it? Here we go. It's wanting to go, is it? Go on. What is making that work? Go on. How does that work? I can't see what, uh, unless it's underneath. I can't see any anything on that. Let's go fast forward. So what should happen there? Do you know what? This is major problems, I think. Hmm. Well, I don't know what the original buyer paid for it, but uh, if he paid a lot of money for a working item, I can see why he would have wanted to send it back because there's, uh, I think there's plenty wrong here, isn't there? Plenty wrong. So this is kind of rubber that's just gone hard over the years. We might be able to soften that up by cleaning it, possibly boiling it. That's a lovely, motor there with a nice uh, tiny little teeth on it for grip. I really can't see how that spinning can cause this to uh, this to turn. Let's unplug it. I think we need to take the bottom off and start to uh, get into this. I'm just going to try to drain the power out of any capacitors. 
So we need to look at this, we need to look at that, we need to look at this. Uh, and we don't know about any sounds yet. So I think this is going to be quite a long video. So we have big flathead screws here. Let's undo them and see what happens. Oh, excellent. Right, okay, I can see another belt down here. Oh, look here. Look here. Schematics, I bet, used to be in there. They're not there now. But I bet you there used to be some schematics in there. How nice is that? Uh, right to repair and all that. Right, okay, uh, we've got a little bit of leftover tape here as well. Oh, so look, they did take off the bottom. You can see a bit of tape here. Because this is where the fuses are that he was talking about. We've got a very dangerous looking capacitor there. Can you see these fuses here? Yeah. So this is how that works. Now, how am I gonna do this without breaking everything? Because I can't rest it on its front. Right there. And again, that belt looks nice and, uh, looks nice and big and strong. Well, I think that belt needs to be boiled because it's got a bit of a kink in it. When it had a kink in it. Look, can you see there? I think it's uh, there. It's got a kink in it here. You can't see, can you? Around this area here. I suppose ideally they would need to be replaced. They look strong. They haven't. They haven't degraded it down. I think if we boil them for uh, a few minutes, I think that would uh, that would fix that. Right. Okay. Can we take off this thing here? Do you know what? Realistically, we should start discharging the capacitors, shouldn't we? How am I going to show you me doing this now? I need to rest this on something. There we go. Right. Let's measure some of. Just some of these. No? I think I might be okay. Yeah, I think I'm all right there. I mean, there's a lot of capacitors here, but they're smaller. Oh, here it is. This is a big transformer here, isn't it? Yeah, I think I'm going to be okay to work on this. I'm still going to be wary though. Excellent. Now, how do I actually take this out though? There we go. <laughs> there you have it. You can see that it's uh, it's no longer 
it's no longer round. But I think we'll get that back, you know. Right, so that's that one done. And see how much even they've discoloured. I wonder whether this was in the smoker's house, because how would the sun get to those ones there? Oh, the lever. I can do the lever now while I'm here as well. Let's get that sorted. Right, so we've got this thing here, and this thing goes... Oh, okay, there's some wires in the way. Let's move those wires out of the way. Should be able to just slot that back in, which we can. Now, what actually keeps that in place there? Otherwise that's just going to pull out again. So that's just there to pivot. Uh, what's broken off there, I wonder? What could I do there to keep that in place? Or do you think maybe when you've got the front lid on it here that that's supposed to sit underneath the lid to stop it coming up? Maybe there should be something around here to stop you putting it up. Do you know what I mean? So rather than doing it from here, maybe we can do it from the other side. Something here maybe. Stop it pulling all the way through. Mind you, there's no marks on it here. You think there would be marks maybe when people are wiggling it. I'm not quite sure what to do here yet. I mean, if I could get some little screw terminal thing to clamp onto here, that would stop it from pulling out. You know, like a chocolate block connector, an electrical connector. That might be enough to do it, uh, to do it on there. Now, this is what I'm thinking. You see the little screw terminal bit on the inside, not the plastic, but just the screw terminal bit. If I was to put that on here, then it means that people could undo the screw later, and uh, but yet, hopefully it will have enough grip that it won't pull out because nobody's going to be, if you're going to force it out massively, it's going to come out. But I think even originally it would have come out because this is designed to come apart. I just can't see what mechanism would have been used here, but I think that this will work. Ah, that's not going to work because the idea works, but look, when you go up at an angle here, can you see that one disappears? And then when I go at that angle, that one disappears. So that is not going to work. Oh, that's a shame. So I have to get a bigger one for the middle. I don't think these are going to be, I think these are going to be too small. Yeah. Okay, I found another one here. Basically, whenever I kind of have leftover stuff, I just throw them into a big container. And then when I need things like washers, screws, etc., then uh, normally that comes up trumps, just like this one here. So for example, the screw that they put in is quite loose. You can see it wobbling here. But look, I found this one. It's still too long, and it would still need to be cut down because I'm sure this would have been a grub screw originally. But look at this. I mean, this, even if you were just to leave this as it is, it just looks so much better. It fits perfectly. And look at that finish there. That already looks much better, but it still doesn't feel nice on the finger. Better than the other one, but still not perfect. But I could cut that down, and then that could go flush, and I would probably get away with that, but I quite like the idea of having one that goes all the way in. But I think this one will work better. So if I had a small drill, I suppose you could just drill through it and then put a wire through it, and just tie the wire up, and then that would work perfectly in the next person looking at it could just undo the wire if they needed to get into it again. But I don't have a drill bit that small.
Nope, that's not going to work. Ah, annoying. Actually, do you know what? Why am I being so silly about this? All I have to do is two small cable ties here and here and around there because it's not going to fall over the lip there and they're going to get caught in between these bits here. Two small cable ties, that's all I need. Here we go. So, yeah, a, a solution that would have to be redone. It's not like something you can unscrew and then put on. But realistically, how often is this going to get taken apart? Now, before I go and commit the other one to it, let's just see if that is going to work. Yep. Fine. Oh, something just popped out here. Where did that come from? Right, okay, well I don't know where that goes, but that looks like it's some kind of light on the end of a light or something. Let's worry about that later. Yeah, now look, you can't pull that out at all and it is lodged in place. I suppose the only thing is by doing that you are making it harder to go into the diagonal positions but it's still there, it's still perfectly fine. There's not much difference between that and the up and down. I think that's a good enough solution there. Okay, so I'm happy with that there now. So now we have to, what do we have to do now? Belts. And find out why this isn't working. Why is that so loose? What's going on there? So how do we take apart all this? So I'm gonna to have to undo this from the bottom here. Just found a circlip here, what's that about? Where does that go to? I wonder originally was that on the bottom here, the circlip. I bet it was, you know, I bet something's broken off here. And the bit I just repaired. Yeah. Do you know what? That would have fitted on there originally. On there like that. But I think bits have worn off or broken off over the years. So what we have to do is and we're going to have to undo this one here. There's a little Allen key thing here. And we're going to have to take this bottom off. Then hopefully the top bit will come away. Okay. Oh, look at that. There's a lovely bearing in here. So let's keep it in order. So that's some sort of clutch thing to allow slippage. Now how do I take this off? Now a little plastic thing's flipped off from somewhere and one from here as well. What is going on? Where do they come from? Did they come from in here, the thing I'm working on now? Oh, I don't know what's going on. Excellent. Oh, it's all incredibly well made, isn't it? Really is. Ah, so look, when we press fast forward. Now, nah, what's going on here? What moves this thing around? What's happened here? This looks all, that's all mangled. That's not factory there. What's that about? Right, is this some sort of break?
what is this mangled mess about here? Let's try and straighten it up, then we might be able to work out what it used to be for. Right, now, it resembles something like that, I think. I wonder what that is all about. I mean, that's definitely got a hole in there, so that's designed to go in here. What would that be used for there? Let's just see if I can work out where it's supposed to go. So I think it should be, see it won't go up anymore, why won't it go up more? Oh, here we go, right there now. So I think it should be up there. When we do that, that should be in that position. So to fast forward, that needs to go that way, yes? And this needs to then go, so this is going clockwise. Let's plug it in and see what that's doing there. Is it okay to plug in, I wonder? Yeah, that's going to turn, isn't it? Right, let's turn it on. Okay, I don't know why it's making a funny noise. Let's just go here. Unplug it again. So that is how that needs to go. Ah, springs, 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 springs. Look, there's a spring here for this one here. Should a spring go between here and here? Is that what needs to be done? Is that what needs to be done? So then when we fast forward, so hold on one second, there's a spring there. Look, it's a spring. See here. Right now, because this lever's here, this can't go up and touch this wheel. But now look, when we do this, the spring will pull this up and then it will allow it to touch that wheel, which will then touch that wheel. So we need a spring. We need a spring from there to there. Now that's easier said than done because I don't have any springs, I don't think. Oh, look, they act as like suspension. Hmm. Right, there is no suspension on this one, though. And I think that that's hitting this here. There we go. Don't know. I don't know, that's obviously had some sort of modification. Anyway, we need to think about this spring thing here. Ah, groove here. I bet you that groove goes down to here for that. I bet that's where that gets its... Uh... Yeah, right, so yeah, I think, that's, I think that's where we get that from. So that's that little mystery fixed. So we need to have one that goes around there to there. the counter. Right, okay. Let's find a spring. So this is a spring on top of an Allen key, you know, to put onto a ring, which I don't uh, don't need, I just need the Allen key. And that spring is a similar size to that one there, a little bit thicker. So maybe I might be able to do something with this by uh, stretching it out.
Right, well that's clearing it there. That's not going to affect it there. Because that will just shove that out of the way when it's not in use. Yeah, right, okay, let's try it now. Oh, look at that. Brilliant. I think that belt needs to be taken off as well. Look at that one. That's not really doing what it needs to do. Yeah, that's not spinning properly now. Right, so ideally I need to take this belt off here as well. How am I going to do that? The answer to that question is by just spending ages trying to undo different things, working the belt out. I don't want to dismantle the whole thing because it's going to be a nightmare to put back together. If you were a proper B&O engineer, I'm sure you could do it very easily. But for me, I'm trying to guess every single part of this thing and uh, I'm not finding it easy whatsoever. I'm having to fast forward through massive chunks of this now because to get to this level already, I've been on this for hours. And even what you're witnessing now is probably another hour's work just condensed down into a few minutes. So what I'm doing is uh, undoing different things to get the belt out i'm also cleaning as i go along i'm trying to get the rubber a bit cleaner using a wet wipe and also some ipa as well to try to soften it up i'm also trying to get that little counter to work again because that's all seized up so i'm flooding that with ipa and trying to work it around try to get that working again uh, the next part of this video you'll see will be me putting the belts into a boiling pan of water to try to boil them back into shape Sometimes it can work. Not sure if it's going to work on these because they're very thick, but I think it's worth a, worth a try. So sit back, listen to the music. Let me uh, give a shout out to the My Mate Vince Massive while we're here. So this month, the Massive members are KipDigital.com, Kip Hakes, Max Rokotansky, Having Fun Repairs, Ellensburg Amplifier Repair and Service, Will McAlis, Chris Seal, Felipe at MrKeeps.com, King Curd from Low Book Auto Sales, DJ VG, Tobias Hennig, and Robert from Timsey's Auto Air. So massive thanks to you guys and thanks to everybody who watches these videos, especially when I'm struggling on items like this. So kick back and relax and listen to the music for a bit. Life is a winding road. No telling where it goes Driving through days and nights Won't stop for traffic lights And I I really wanna know, really wanna know If I will ever figure out where the road goes Even if I'm falling down I will keep on searching for my highs You can say I lost my mind I will keep on holding my head high Even if the sky is falling down
Okay, so I'm just going to let this boil for about six, seven or eight minutes and just give it a little stir every now and then. And hopefully, see that kink there? I'm hoping maybe that kink might end up pulling back in. Hopefully they won't disintegrate completely. The belts are served. Now, is that going to make any difference? Not so sure. I can still see the kink on it here. Still kinking out there. Do you know what? I think I am going to... I'm going to leave that one, because that's thin. But this one, I think I'm going to put on again for another eight minutes, because it's very thick, and it hasn't seemed to do any damage. So let's boil that again. Right, so that belt's been boiling now for 16 minutes in total, and to me, it still looks like it's got a kink here. So I don't know if that's made any difference whatsoever. Anyway, I've uh, continued to clean this, and good news, this has now freed itself up. So if I was to cheat, and if I was to go to uh, 999, hold on a second, let's put this to 80. Let's lock that into place there. Now, watch this. If I do this, you will see it will go over to 100. There we go. And I've gone all the way over, so when I put this to 9, and lock it all in. You will see that this will go over to 600. Zero, zero. There we go, yeah, and it resets itself. So that's working, I just need to run the, a new band from there to there. I'm gonna have a look at my Walkman bands because there's not gonna be a huge amount of strength on that, and that's not really gonna affect the sound quality. So I think I, I'll get away with that. Right, so what I now need to do is put this belt back in. This is gonna take ages. So I need to put it around there. I need to put it through here. I need to get that back onto here. And I uh, don't even know where that goes. Uh, yeah, this is gonna take quite some time. So I'm gonna turn off the camera for a bit because I'm just basically trying to put back together what I just undid earlier, and then we'll turn on the camera again when I'm trying to get the belt around this bit here. I've got that belt on now, but look, when I go into reverse and I turn this, you can see that it's still not gonna be turning this one here. This needs to be this needs to be further down this way in order for that to turn. So I think I'm gonna to try to unhook this spring and shorten it up. I think maybe the spring has, uh, well, I suppose these things have worn. So I'm just cutting some of it off. Right, now let's put that bit on here. Right, let's see if that works better. Well, it's certainly doing it there, but it's not pushing that against that, is it? Oh, maybe it's only that way. Yeah, because that's rewind, isn't it? Well, that might work. Right, I'm going to do the uh, belt from here to here and also the belt underneath. Right, so I've got like a Walkman belt here. It might be enough. So I'm just going to hook that round the bottom bit. Okay, yeah, I think that should be okay. And that needs to go round this bit here. Right, okay, let's see now if that's going to turn that way. Yeah, there we go. Okay, we're slowly starting to get there. I've put the bottom back together. The inside, not the bottom case. But you can see now that hopefully, hopefully see, I've got the black rubber belt going back through here, put the cover back on here. And then I've the Allen key, the hex key screws down there as well. Now, I did turn it on and it does appear to be working. Whether it's going to work when there's tape in it or not, I'm not sure, but watch this. So now, turn on, and you can see that that and that is spinning. And it's pretty quiet as well. Now, if we go into play, that needs to start going around, which it does. Again, whether it's the right speed or not. Do you know what? There seems to be quite a bit of force in there. Yeah. And then fast forward, really going for it, and you can see this jumping up down here. 
and rewind. Now that's not going to turn here because this will only turn when this is turning because this will freewheel back this way, won't it? In rewinds because it's being pulled through. What do you think? Do you think it's going to work? I think it might do. But it might be playing slow because the belts are loose, you see. Let's do it on a different speed. Yeah, look at that. Well, I think it's been uh, I think it's been quite an interesting one. So what did we have? We had the belt missing from here. We had the spring missing from here and tying up the spring here to make it go in reverse. So yeah, there's a few a few little things, a few little things on it. For me, it's more about working out the mechanism. So for example, with that fast forward, I didn't know how it worked, and then suddenly you realise the spring's missing. Stuff like that's good for me. Right, so uh, what I'm going to do is, just off camera, I'm just going to clean up the inside a little bit with a wet wipe. I'm not going to go crazy because there's, there's dirt everywhere on this thing. And uh, then I need to put the case back on, and then I'll give the outside of it a nicer clean because that's the bit that everybody's looking at all the time. Then we can test it and hear it probably playing really slow or really fast, who knows. Also on this mechanism here, I've got it unplugged at the moment, but you can see this kind of horrible brown leftover grease everywhere. So when I go up here, you can see it there. So I'm going to clean all that stuff off and then I'm going to put some new uh, synthetic grease on it. This is Mollycoat EM30L. And hopefully then it might be nice and smooth. I think out of all the B&O products I've done, this is by far the one that's in the, just the dirtiest. It just looks like it's been stored in a shed or something like that. But then again, this is by far the oldest as well. Well, this plastic thing, I can't work out where that's coming from at all. It looks like it's to do with a light going through it, but the only lights that I can see are on here. So maybe this has dropped in from some other thing. This might not be part of this. Over the years, it might have fallen into it. But if you have a look here now, watch this. Can you see now that if I center this nicely, I am gonna to have to put a little bit of glue in there to glue it on there, or a little bit of double-sided tape. But you can see now, it's going down there nicely. Like so. Right, the mystery of this has now been solved and it is actually very important. This one here, well, if I press that button here, can you see it's moving this lever here? Yep, yeah, just about, see, there we go. Now look, it's not doing anything because this little kind of Lego type connector here is broken. So this needs to go onto here like so, like the one next to it, and then when you press it in, oh, just lost it, when you press it in, it will actually press in the switch. So by me doing this here now, it's not pressing the switch in. So if you look at the one next to it, when I move that lever there, can you see it's pressing the switch in, but this isn't pressing the switch in because the top part of this is broken. Let me zoom in and try and show you. There you go, hopefully that will become nice and clear now. So it's snapped here. So when you press that in, it should be on top of it, and it's not. So I need to glue that up and possibly maybe turn this round to make this the, the good side. No, I can't, no. Yeah, I'm gonna have to do some work there. This one here is also broken, this one here. Oh, that's, that one's still working because the right side's broken. Yeah, that's fine. Might not be going in as far as it should do, though. Hmm, interesting. So I've got to deal with that.
Now this isn't going to be seen, so I'm just going to do it with super glue, and then I'm going to get the soldering iron, and I'm just going to melt the sides together here and here, because this bit here is the thing that clips into the metal push thing, and then the actual lever comes and just hits this side. I don't know why they made it hollow with the hole in it. Maybe it's so they've got different options to have different switches in here, possibly. Right, okay, that's back on there now. And uh, so it's this one here with all the messy glue. Let's see if it's gonna work now. There we go. Well, whatever it does, hopefully it's gonna do it again. So I'm gonna put the back on. Obviously, I don't know if this is actually gonna work yet, but I'm gonna put the back on to make it safe to work with. I'm gonna give it all a good clean and then we can test it, get some speakers connected, get some tape on and see if it plays. And remember that screw that was sticking out, that's gonna scratch up a load of surfaces. Well, on this side, there's just a hole here. So I'm just gonna take the screw out and leave a hole here. Maybe originally there was feet, but again, I haven't got those feet, so it's better to have a hole and for it to be a bit unsteady rather than scratching up everything. Right, check this out. I used the Having Fun Repairs Dremel and obviously wearing goggles. And look, I just took off the top of that nice screw that I showed you earlier. And I then dremeled, so I just grinded through here. Yeah, and then I just dremeled down to make a nice little deep groove for the uh, screwdriver. And look at this, it looks, when it's in here, it looks factory. So it goes in nice and perfectly. I think that's the perfect size. And I can tighten it up. And look, only now is it starting to get to the middle hole there. So you can see that that's gonna grip on lovely and it's gonna be completely hidden. And in the future, all somebody has to do is get a screwdriver in there to uh, put it in. So that's gonna look a million times better than before. Oh, lovely, look at that. Oh, that looks so much better and feels much better as well. Yeah, I reckon that's how it was originally. So here it is looking nice and clean, but it's not working. Now, I didn't say it on camera, but what went through my mind when I first of all turned this on was that these needles went right the way across. And I thought, well, that's strange because why is it picking up stuff there if it's not playing anything? I thought maybe because it was noisy. But uh, yeah, I've put the tapes on here and they are fast forwarding, they're playing when I do the different speeds, they're doing that. It's still struggling with the rewinding, sometimes works, sometimes doesn't. But there's no sound coming out of this at all and I've swapped the tapes over, the reels, and I know these reels work because they work on this one here. What's happening is there's just a huge amount of noise, like an amazing amount of noise. Left and right channels do work, but I think there's a problem with the uh, pickup. Check it out. So you can see now the needles go back down to here. But as soon as I press play, listen to that hum, and the needles are right the way over. It doesn't matter what I do with the volume here, they're still right the way over. You can hear left volume, right volume, and uh, this bass is doing something. Treble doesn't seem to do anything. I'm not sure what they do. But uh, yeah, this, this works, like, this is pause, that works, but look, there's no, just no sound at all. Fast forward, play, no sound, needles right the way across. So I think maybe it's something to do with in here, because look at all this bodge job off, uh, you can see that there's been, either the head's been replaced or something's happened, I'm not too sure. And then, I don't mean a bodge job, I mean it has been soldered, but these little heat shrinks haven't been shrunk all the way down. So, uh, yeah, I'm unsure now whether or not 
I am going to be able to fix it because I haven't got another one to compare to. I don't really know what's happened to this in the past. I mean, we can see that quite a few things were taken out of the inside, springs and stuff. So I don't really know the history of this and I don't know how to fault find that unless it's a problem with the head here and I don't know how to test that. So I'm going to do a bit of research online and then uh, see if I can take anything from there. But I think annoyingly that this is going to be a failure even though I've put so much work into this already. Okay, I've looked online and it's the usual culprits, the capacitors, that's what most people are saying. And the sound I'm hearing is the electricity hum, the 60 hertz hum coming down the wiring. So, I mean, with this one, even without the tape, it's making the exact same noise. And having the tape in, I can't hear any talking or song singing coming through that tape whatsoever. And that's what's on the tape. Whether the tape's in or out, all I get is that hum. So I think the main capacitors are not filtering out the mains electricity noise. And that's what we can hear here. Yeah, because there's no sound apart from a hum. So what I am going to do is, and that's the same sound whether these are in or out, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just have this as a part one video because there's been so many fixes to this already, I'm sure the video is going to be quite long and then I'm going to do a part two. Hopefully in part two we can get this working again after I've done more research into even where I can buy these specialised looking capacitors. But it was an expensive item back in the day and I think it's still worth fixing now. I'm not sure how much they go for, but I think just because of what it is, I think it would be nice to have it playing. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it'd be nice to see it playing again. So uh, until the next time, I will see you all hopefully very, very soon. If you haven't yet subscribed, maybe this is your perfect opportunity to subscribe so you don't miss part two. Apologies, I can get it all working in part one, but that's the way it goes sometimes. Not everything can be easily fixable. Until the next time, Take care.